Now remember the case earlier this year resulted in an extension for cash paymaster services to pay social grants simply because no other service provider could step into the breach. The case then was brought by the Centre for Applied Legal Studies on behalf of the Black Sash Trust. Koresha Patel is a candidate attorney at the Centre and she joins us in studio now. Thank you for being with us, uh, Ms. Patel. So the clock is ticking again. Is it a good thing that at least it's not the 11th hour now where we're in this year talking about a uh, next year when the next contract comes to an end sure I think having learned the lesson of bringing this at the last minute there have been measures put in place to ensure that hopefully we don't reach such a situation again the Constitutional Court took those measures expressly in the order that it made in March to ensure that we wouldn't reach such a fate accompli again hopefully mm. it, it sounds like time uh, is still important. Uh, the post office saying we, we need to get geared up for this even though it, it's April. So, so something should be done now. Yes, indeed. I mean, any service provider that is appointed to take over the payment of social grants will need adequate time to prepare for phasing in the new process. So having the necessary payment systems in place, ensuring that biometric data is in place, the necessary safeguards for data protection of the beneficiaries, all this would require a series of test runs, etc., to make sure that it is a seamless transition come 31st of March 2018. So the Black Sash, uh, who you help, are concerned about the beneficiaries themselves. This, this is a social issue. Uh, looking at that, is, is the post office then the right service provider? Do you have a view on that? I think as a preliminary point, one has to remember that it is indeed the social grant beneficiaries that are pivotal in this case. As you, as you indicated, it is indeed a social matter and that seems to have gotten lost with all of the delays, the time frames, the to and fro between SASA and SAPO. And just judging from the CSIR report which was commissioned, it has become evident that so far the evaluation has indicated that SAPO doesn't seem, does indeed seem competent, at least 93% um, competent to take mm -hmm. over these duties. However, it looks like there's a relational problem. So the CEO of the post office sounded frustrated. Uh, the minister, Batabile Dlamini, uh, said that they would not be bullied. Uh, could it work without the, the two sides working together? Definitely I mean, there's not. an agreement. There's a, they talk tonight, 24 hours to come up with an agreement. Is, is it all possible? We are hoping that it can indeed come up in 24 hours, at least some sort of engagement, because on the one hand, we had the minister averring that the South African Post Office was only competent to take over one aspect, which was the integrated payment system. They weren't competent enough to provide banking services or provide cards or indeed pay cash at cash pay point systems. Whereas the CSIR report has indicated, in fact, the post office is indeed competent. So it does seem to be rather political at this stage and for the seamless transition, it is necessary that all role players and all stakeholders do work together for the benefit of the beneficiaries. In, in a way, this system is too big to fail or, or we can't let down millions of uh, beneficiary, well, grant recipients and, and that's why the Concord had to step in last time. Is it a concern for you that, again, MPs need to be involved? Uh, we, we know that they were going to oversee the process, but, but do you feel like government is, is taking this seriously enough or, or is it always going to be a push up, up a hill? Just judging from the current tenor of things and how it has worked so far since the Constitutional Court delivered its judgment in March, we once again see that there's a need to push SASA. Deadlines haven't been met. Um, the panel of experts report has indicated that certain contracts were to be issued already. For example, contracting with the South African Post Office was supposed to happen. This hasn't happened and there is a possibility of a further delay because now you have to have an open tender process which also takes months in order for that process to go through. And again, that could result in more and more delays and the deadline is actually around the corner. Mm. So one may have to inevitably revert to court again because it does seem that SASA is indeed delaying. And, and that's a concern for all, uh, it, it causes anxiety. Remind us why Cash Paymaster Services has to go. So in terms of the Constitutional Court order, it doesn't expressly bind Cash Paymaster Services to the period of one year. So the Constitutional Court order provides that until an entity other than Cash Paymaster Services can take over the provision of social grants, 
Cash Pay Master Services and the South African Social Security Agency has to ensure the continued payment thereof. But there are concerns relating to the current administration of the grant system by CPS as a net one affiliate, where there are concerns from SASA as well as civil society organizations like the Black Sash that there are a number of deductions happening from social grants as they are currently being paid out by CPS. So in order to circumvent these concerns of unlawful deductions and to ensure that there is a more streamlined legal process in place come March 2018, there is a need to ensure that there is another service provider. What, what's your legal opinion? Are, the, are those deductions still happening given all the public concern? Uh, and are they happening illegally right now? The current status is that the case relating to the unlawful deductions from the grant accounts of beneficiaries is currently at the Supreme Court of Appeal. We've been given notice that the application will be heard in 2018. And so far, to the knowledge of CALS as well as Black Sash, there are indeed a few allegations of unlawful deductions still happening from grant beneficiaries on the ground, particularly because the regulations passed by the Department of Social Development to ensure that such uh, social grant monies are indeed ring fenced, haven't really passed muster and were found by the High Court to actually not be constitutional in that sense. And, and these are vulnerable people sometimes living off 520 rand a month or something that, like that. In, in finality, do you support the, the post office if we look at this as an issue where a government by using uh, suppliers who are local, who are uh, hopefully empowering people, who are maybe part of, of uh, who we are as South Africa, uh, that process could be beneficial rather than using foreigners, uh, rather than using uh, people where, th where this profit motive seems, seems mm -hmm. overarching. Indeed, I mean there is a very big incentive to using local service providers just in terms of capacitating government but we must reiterate from Carl's and Black Sash point that whatever is in the best interest of social beneficiaries, yeah, social grant they beneficiaries, they indeed come first. So a working social grants payment system is necessary to ensure this and if SOPO can indeed pull through with that and make sure it's a streamlined process then it is to the betterment of society. All right, thank you for your time this evening. Thank that you, was uh, Karaisha Patel from the Centre for Applied Legal Studies.